Welcome to Cute Fast Tracks series. For API recommended practice 578. In this lecture, we will discuss the material verification programs of API RP 578 Part 2. In the previous lecture, we discussed sub-clauses 5.1, 5.2, 5.3, and 5.4. In this lecture, we will discuss the sub-clauses 5.5, 5.6, and 5.7. New Construction Material Verification Program The owner user or designee should review and approve the material verification program and the testing procedure of the fabricator, material supplier, or third-party agency prior to testing. Timing of material verification testing Positive material identification should be performed at the point in time that helps ensure proper materials have been used in the fabrication of an assembly. Positive material identification of components supplied by a distributor A higher degree of positive material identification should be conducted on materials supplied by stocking distributors due to the potential for unapproved material substitutions as a result of frequent handling by a number of parties. Existing Installed Assets Material Verification Program Prioritizing Assets for Retroactive Positive Material Identification General Factors to Consider Likelihood of Unapproved Material Substitutions During Previous Projects and Maintenance Activities Consequences of a Failure Due to Improper Material Being Installed Reason for a specific material specification, that is corrosion resistance or product purity. Historical data relating to unapproved material substitutions. Site-specific factors to consider. Construction and maintenance practices. Reason for alloy specification. Factors to consider. When determining the extent of positive material identification, historical inspection and material verification program records, number of plant modifications, materials control during original construction, equipment modifications, and maintenance activities, material verification program quality during construction and fabrication, Failure mode and consequence of a loss of containment. Likelihood of corrosion degradation. The owner user should establish a methodology F or estimating the relative priority for positive material identification within a given unit. This methodology may be based on a qualitative or quantitative risk analysis as per API RP 580. Owner user may also want to consider the opportunity to conduct positive material identification relative to upcoming planned maintenance opportunities, for example outages, turnarounds. Example of type components are most likely to have a substitution with the wrong material warm-up and bypass lines on pumps or check valves small bore piping 2 nps and below thermo wells threaded components bolting piping as a part of a package system components without recognized marking welds process systems with history of frequent maintenance requirements valves, valve assemblies, and valve bonnets, and removable devices, 
such as rupture discs, spacer blinds, blind flanges, plugs, or ring joint gaskets. Material verification program as an element of maintenance systems responsibilities the owner user should establish a written procedure for the material verification program to be used for repair of assets during maintenance and turnaround activities control of incoming materials and warehousing a material verification program should be directly applied to activities associated with receiving materials into a warehouse system. Positive material identification may be performed as part of this receiving function or, when appropriate, may be performed at the supplier's location as a condition of release for shipment. Positive material identification within the warehouse should not be regarded as an alternative to positive material identification of the fabricated assets when positive material identification is specified. Maintenance activities Temporary removal of piping spool pieces, including the removal of blind flanges used for access. Replacement of small bore threaded pipe nipples and plugs frequently found as drains and vents in process areas. Replacement of welded in valves. In turnaround situations, where many heat exchangers in varying services are disassembled for cleaning, inspection, and repair. When tower internals, such as tray parts, for example, Clips, tray flapper valves or bubble caps, and fasteners are replaced. Review questions. Question number one. Due to the higher potential for material handling mistakes, a higher degree of PMI should be conducted on materials supplied by. Answer is C. Question number two. When prioritizing the need for PMI on existing pressure equipment, which of the following is not a factor to consider? Answer is A. Question number three. Evaluating risk is an important part of prioritizing the need for PMI on existing pressure equipment. Which document can be used to develop risk based methodologies? Answer is A. Question number four. The owner decides to conduct PMI testing on existing pressure equipment. Which of the following is a major factor in prioritizing the equipment? Answer is D. Question number five. Which of the following piping components is most likely to have a substitution with the wrong material? Answer is D. Question number six. During repairs and alterations the owner should Answer is B. Question number seven. PMI of materials received at the warehouse. Answer is D. Question number eight. 
The material verification program should cover which of the following in service maintenance activities. Answer is D. This lecture is prepared by Samir Saad, and this is his profile. Thanks a lot for watching, and please waiting us for next lecture.